Testing, testing, one, two, three. React, react. Don't let nobody beat you to hurt a one. Don't let nobody beat you to hurt a one. Keep your hips up, keep your hips up, keep your hips up. And get out. There's something that sticks with me so much. I've seen a lot of a lot of a lot of gruesome things, you know. I uh, see a lot of a lot of kids my, who were my age and even younger do some pretty gruesome things. Just being in a refugee camp where you know you only eat maybe once or twice a week or get water, like you know what I'm saying? It was those were the, those were the things where that will forever stick with me. Those those the hard days of eating maybe once a, once a day or maybe once a week, that's what kind of like filled me to kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Like, never ever give up on your dream and just keep moving because if I was able to, to withstand that, you know, um, the sky's the limit. You heard that? Yeah, I hear that. Nick Anderson got a big booger in his nose. Uh, over. He, he's, he's a big time motivator. You know, um, his teammates love him. True fit. True fit athletics all day. You know, they love him to death because he, he pushes them uh, uh, as, 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 as hard as he pushes himself. Look at this specimen right here of a, of a Haiti hurdler. Look at him. See that man? Look at that man. Look at that specimen right there. Um, I'm loud, I'm obnoxious, I'm jokey, I'm serious 2% of the time. I always find positivity in negativity. There's nights where I cried myself to sleep, you know, because I don't know who's around me. Only person who's, who's actually dear to me is my oldest sister. My mom is gone, my dad is gone, it's just me and my sister. We're in this refugee camp fending for ourselves. So you got an eight-year-old and an 18-year-old. We're on survival mode. Um, we're in a camp where everybody else is also in survival mode, so it's like first come, first serve. If you're not in line, you're hungry for the next 48 hours. If you're not in line, you're thirsty for the next week. Thank God I made it out, you know? <laughs> at my best, I'm at my best, at my worst, I'm still at my best because I know when I was at my worst, I had no, no, no vision, you know? And I was able to, when I, once I was able to get my vision, that's what made me realize that anything is possible. For me, like, I remember everything leading up to um, the war. You know, I, uh, I, I left the war right, right after it, it hit. At the time, um, they were actually killing our tribe, the Kron tribe. So my mother, she, she fled the country in Liberia to come to America. Whatever interaction she was able to do, she managed to get it and got herself a visa, came to the U.S and left us there. My dad was actually in prison. He was uh, chief of police in Liberia. So because he had ties to the government, when the government was overthrown, uh, he, was, he was then put in political uh, prison um, based off the ties with the president when Charles Taylor took over. Every day I, think, I thought about my mom, where is she? You know, I had the little, like, I could still remember these, these thoughts in my head. Every time my airplane would go over my head, I would always be like, oh, that's my mom, da 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 da, because my older sister would always say, yeah, she took a plane. I've never took a plane before, so I just assumed that, oh, that's her flying over me. Liberia means more than me than the name, you know? Liberia is the place that birthed me. Liberia is the place that gave me substance, gave me wisdom, and gave me struggle. Anywhere I can go in this world, I'm carrying that flag. Sports has always been in my life, you know, because um, in Africa, in Liberia, football or soccer is the number one sport. Um, so I was always around, around the pitch and just, you know, watching the game and stuff like that. However, track became a big part of my life in, in eighth grade. Um, once eighth grade hit, it was kind of like, all right, you know, let's get it. In Africa, everybody wants to either go to Europe or America. That's the biggest thing ever. Like, you know, once you say, okay, you have access to come to America, it's now, oh my God, we're, we're leaving. It was very much of a culture shock because meeting people, I had to actually speak English. Funny story, I learned how to speak proper English by watching Barney. Um, sounds weird, but I watched Barney, I watched Kyle Yu, Franklin, uh, The Wiggles. Uh, blues clues, all those things, I, I was actually into it, you know. Um, 
They, I used to get made fun of because I had like a huge Liberian accent. You know, my biggest fear was getting, getting profiled, you know, um, for being African and also not fitting in. People actually used to make fun of us because we was African. So we used to be called African Booty Scratcher. And even, even one of the incidents, uh, my, my older sister was even jumped by two girls because she was African. Um, for the neighborhood that I lived in, in Philly, West Philly, um, it was very gang oriented. So um, it was very high tension between Africans and African Americans. Further on in my high school career, um, when I was able to move out and go to like suburban school, I faced a few racism stuff um, when I first arrived to the school because obviously they didn't know who I was. So a lot of people were saying, get this N-word out of here. We don't want another black kid here. But when sports started, we love you. Oh my See, God. look, I'm one of these athletes who don't wear socks when they put spikes on. My feet don't stink, but I'm gonna put on some spikes. I made a pretty big name for myself freshman and sophomore year. Sophomore, junior year, broke state records, All-Americans in high school, uh, New Balance All-American Championship, high school championships, all these stuff, and then on, and got a scholarship to Auburn University. He's, he's a student before he's an athlete, you know, and that's one of the main things that you got to understand. Those athletes that become students first and athletes second, those are the ones that flourish and it's something that the world want to see. And that's, and that's Zaza, you know. Push, come through. Our team was so high and elite to the point that everybody in the group has made a national team. They actually pushed me to become a lot faster than what I thought I could be. Everybody's there, they, they, we, all had, we all shared the same common goal, and the same common goal was to make the Olympic team, make a world championship team, whatever national team that's possible. So um, just being a part of them kind of like just made me draw deeper in my soul and my heart to kind of just like create a time, create create that work ethic that I didn't think I have, you know? They're underway. And straight the man calm at it. Wellington Zaza. You know, it just didn't quite fit right with me to not represent my country. Because we're such a recovering nation, um, I felt that it was needed for me to become that face for the country to kind of like help revive it in a positive light. The fact that my name is on the record books in Liberia and in Africa in general um, kind of like speaks volumes because to this day I still get like up and coming African athletes. Oh, what's up champ? You know, I see your name. You have the African record for my age group. You have the African record for this and this, this and this. You know, um, it, it's kind of very exciting to say the least because any, anybody who's coming up, they see your name. And those are the type of things that I want to see happen in the future because the more they see your name, the more they reach out. And I'm a very helpful person, I'm going to help. For me, I don't think there's enough appreciation for the kids who are in Liberia because they are the next generation. They don't have the, the type of infrastructure that I have here in America. If they show them a little bit more appreciation to try to give them the proper guidance, the, the rightful amount of attention, the rightful amount of, of um, track knowledge, then they will be able to kind of like, you know, evolve and, and, and Liberia could be bigger than anybody can know. I can, I can, I can go with the cliche that the sky's the limit, you know, but I don't, I, I'm, I'm not a cliche coach. Ready? Zaza can go as far as his mind, body, and soul allows him to go. You know, I can easily say that that uh, he's going to go far, right? I can tell you this, he has the potential to go to the top. But at the end of the day, it's solely on Zaza if he want to be at the top. If you potentially feel that you can make these things happen, my advice to you um, is to, to go for it. You know, Africa is the new, is the new norm. You know, my message to all the African kids is like, if you have a dream, if you have a goal, and you have something in your mind that you know you want to do, just do it. Just because you're in Africa, just because you're in a little corner or a bush or whatever you are, you can be found. Stay true to yourself, and you'll be wherever you want it to be.